Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, let me thank the organisers for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, the work I'm going to be presenting today is a study of the antiviral performance of silver nanoparticles deposited in face mask materials. This was a collaboration between physicists and virologists at the University of Castilla-La Mancha in Spain and was funded by CRUE and the Santander Bank. Uh, this was a special call uh, announced during the pandemic. Now it's well known that silver nanoparticles can prevent viruses from becoming infectious by a number of mechanisms. For example, the silver nanoparticles can coat the proteins on the virus membrane and prevent it from docking with receptor proteins on cell membranes and thus entering cells. Uh, a nice example of this was uh, this image taken by the Moronis group of silver nanoparticles uh, attached to the glycoproteins on the surface of uh, an HIV virus particle. Alternatively, the uh, silver nanoparticles can coat the receptor proteins on the cell membranes and prevent the virus from entering the cell that way. If the virus particle does get into the cell, the silver nanoparticles can prevent it reaching the cell nucleus. Uh, if the virus particle does reach the cell nucleus, then the silver nanoparticles can prevent the viral RNA genome from reproducing. And even if that doesn't happen, then the silver nanoparticles can affect other um, factors within the cell, which prevent the cell from assembling the entire virus particle. Now, our silver nanoparticles uh, were produced by a spark aerosol source. This is a simple device that initiates a spark between electrodes of metal of interest, in our case silver, and the spark is in the flow of an inert gas. We use nitrogen. And emerging from the source is a metal aerosol. Uh, now, the device itself is quite small. Uh, it's on the tabletop device. And we coated the cloth by sealing the material on the exhaust of the source so that the aerosol was blown through the material. And as I'll show, uh, this was a good way of coating the nanoparticles through the entire volume of the material. This is a typical nanoparticle size distribution from the source um, with a median diameter of four nanometers. And by varying the source conditions, you can have a small amount of control over the size distribution, but not much. Uh, when I say source conditions, there's basically two things we can vary. One is the power of the spark uh, in watts, and the other is the gas flow rate in meters per minute. And by going from one extreme to the other in various conditions, you can probably get control of the size between three and six nanometers. But virtually all the results I'll show you are with a median diameter of four nanometers. Looking in more detail at the silver nanoparticles themselves, this is a TEM image of uh, some silver nanoparticles deposited on a TEM grid. And although uh, changing the source conditions didn't seem to change the size distribution very much, uh, the source conditions in terms of the flow rate uh, did seem to change the crystallinity of the nanoparticles. So, for example, at low flow rates, um, we get predominantly single crystals, and as shown by the pair of spots in the diffraction, uh, in this case corresponding to the 110 silver lattice planes. Now, to our low flow rate, uh, if we go to a high flow rate, we seem to get predominantly polycrystals as shown by these rings of spots uh, corresponding to the 111 silver lattice planes. And the reason I mention this is that this crystallinity does seem to have an effect on the antiviral performance. Looking at the cloth itself, um, 
we use just standard face mask cloth from face mask that you can buy from the chemist, the cheap ones. And this is SEM image, low resolution, uh, showing the basic construction, which is a front conventional cloth sheet, a rear conventional cloth sheet, and sandwiched in between is a filter, which is also cloth, but with a very high density weave. Now, looking at EDX data uh, for silver within the face mask, we find that very small amount is coated on the front cloth sheet. The vast majority is coated in the filter with virtually undetectable level of silver in the rear cloth sheet. So virtually all the silver nanoparticles are stopped within the filter. Looking in more detail at the filter itself, um, this slightly high resolution SEM images show that shows a very high density weave with a low density weave cloth either side. And again, uh, looking at EDX data for silver through the depth of just the filter this time, um, you can see there's a steady decay of the amount of silver as you go from the front to the back. But basically, the entire filter is coated with silver nanoparticles throughout its volume. Looking in more detail, uh, the silver nanoparticles are within the uh, cloth. This is some images, again SEM images, of fibres within the cloth. And this is after a deposition time of 30 minutes uh, with the power and flow rate shown here. Um, and at higher resolution, you can see the individual nanoparticles on the fibers within the filter. So that's a 30 minute deposition time. Um, and then going to higher deposition time, this time four hours, we can see that there's a very high density of silver nanoparticles on the individual fibers, total agglomerated film. And again, in more detail here, you see this very highly porous uh, coating on the fibers but with individual nanoparticles. Again looking at even higher resolution this time this is uh, TM image of silver nanoparticles uh, coated onto um, a lacy carbon TM grid um, this time with very low deposition rate uh, sorry very low deposition time five minutes um, to be sure that you can see the individual nanoparticles and there they are the four nanometer particles are here and just um, as an example um, this is a image of the Kusutu virus one of the viruses that we used in the study um, to scale so the viruses tested uh, were two um, there was a Mori norovirus non-enveloped uh, and an Osutu virus, which was enveloped. And the reason for using these two different viruses, uh, enveloped and non-enveloped, was to um, look at the, uh, the effect of the silver nanoparticles coating with different proteins. So uh, in the case of the murine norovirus, they're interacting with BP1 and BP2 capsid proteins, whereas in the case of the Osutu virus, uh, they're in interacting with the uh, Usu E membrane protein. So the um, antiviral performance uh, was tested by the virologists here on out of my comfort zone. So I'll just explain very basically uh, the methods used. Uh, but if anybody wants more details, um, I'll uh, steer you to the uh, paper that was published on this in nanomaterials. Okay, so the basic method was the cloth that had been coated was cut into five millimeter discs and uh, onto this was dressed uh, three to four microliters of the viral sample. Now the cloth and the virus were uh, dried for 30 to 40 minutes, 37 degrees, um, to make sure there was good interaction between the silver nanoparticles uh, the virus, virus particles. Then uh, the 
cloth or soaked in 250 microliters of cell culture to interact um, with the cells. And the supernatant of this uh, was recovered and the uh, active virus particles rescued and the level of activity or the level of infectivity of these was measured using a TCID 50 assay. So first of all, uh, let's look at the antiviral performance uh, as a function of deposition time. So in the case of the Maureen nor norovirus, um, we see, um, compared to the control, we see that we have um, a reduction in infection uh, for every set of conditions. But the conditions tested were one hour deposition on each side, one hour, uh, sorry, one hour deposition just one side, one hour deposition each side, and two hour deposition one side. And uh, in all, it seems that uh, two hour deposition on one side seems to produce the best performance, but uh, it seems that basically the more silver nanoparticles you have on the fibers, uh, the higher the performance, the antiviral performance of the nanoparticles. So in the case of Murray norovirus, we see uh, 20 times reduction for the best conditions in the infectious virus. And in the case of the Usutu virus, again, the same set of data, there seems to be more noise for the assays on the Usutu virus, uh, but up to a 60 time um, reduction in infectious virus. Again, best performance seen for two hours coating on one side. So that's the performance as a function of deposition time. If we look uh, now at the performance as a function of the synthesis conditions, there seems to be an interesting trend here. So uh, in the case of the Maureen norovirus, what we're comparing here is the untreated cloth uh, with one hour depositions with different source conditions. So um, here we've got one hour, five watts, two liters per minute, in other words, a low flow rate. And here we've got one hour, five watts, eight liters per, mi uh, liters per minute, um, high flow rate. And remember, um, the effect this has on nanoparticles, in the case of low flow rate, these are mostly single crystals, and on the high flow rate, these are mostly polycrystals, and you can see that there's clear improvement in performance in going from single crystals to polycrystals. Uh, again, because of the noise, uh, we can't be quite so um, uh, specific in the case of the Susu virus, but again, it seems to show the same trend that uh, you get uh, a better performance with the polycrystals. And we think the reason for this is that the nanoparticles um, have uh, more facets, um, more edge atoms, uh, and so on in the case of the polycrystals. And it seems that these bind more strongly to the proteins. So with that, uh, general conclusions are 95 to 98% of viruses become non-infectious after the contact with the silver nanoparticles deposited in the mask. The silver nanoparticles are effective against both the uh, Muri norovirus and the Usutu virus. And this is interesting because it seems to show the effect is generic because in the two cases they're interacting with completely different proteins. The treatment is most effective in agglomerated films. Now, this was a surprise. Uh, in the early parts of the project, we were very keen to try and keep um, low deposition so the silver nanoparticles were completely separate. But it seems the best performance is with the densest films. Um, and what this shows, uh, or seems to show, is that the virus, remember this is the rescued virus that has come away from the uh, cloth, the uh, interaction with the proteins is sufficiently strong for the virus particles to pull the silver nanoparticles off the agglomerated film. The nanoparticles are most effective when polycrystalline, and as I said, this is probably due to the increased number of, uh, of uh, facets, edge atoms, and so on. And finally, uh, I'd like to close uh, the talk and invite questions. Thank you for listening.